to earthquake resistant construction. For steel is tough. It has two qualities highly essential to earthquake resistance, strength and ductility. Ductility is the ability of a material to undergo distortion, that is, to absorb energy without breaking. Steel has this ability. An actual load test shows that a load of 5,000 pounds is well within the elastic limit of this particular beam. For when the pressure is removed, the beam immediately returns to its original form. Even when pushed beyond its elastic limit, steel can sustain great loads. In this particular test, a load as high as 68,000 pounds distorts the beam considerably, but in spite of this, the beam still holds. So steel has not only ductility, it also has strength. Strength which is measured by its ability to withstand tension, compression, and shear stresses. And it has the ability to impart strength to other materials. Concrete is a good example. Here, a transparent form makes it possible to see how steel reinforcing bars are placed to best impart their strength to a concrete beam. From this reinforcement, the beam will gain both shear strength and tension strength. This can be shown by making a comparative test of two concrete beams of exactly the same dimension. The first beam reinforced with steel, the second unreinforced. The pressure is applied equally on both beams. At a load of 5,000 pounds, the unreinforced concrete is shattered, while the steel reinforced beam has sustained only minor cracks. As the load increases, the damage becomes visible, but the beam will not give way. Even at 30,000 pounds, it will not give way, simply because of the strength of its reinforcing steel. Perhaps no one knows this better than a wrecking crew engaged in demolishing old buildings. If the walls are not reinforced, whether they be of brick, stone, concrete, or any other material, they can be brought down without much difficulty. But if those walls be reinforced with steel, the wreckers have a bigger job on their hands. It will take a tremendous amount of battering to even chip the walls away. And even then, the steel still holds. The only way it can be removed finally is with the chisel or cutting torch. Yes, steel has both strength and ductility. But even these qualities were not enough to save a steel elevated water tank in the Tehachapi earthquake. Its collapse came about because, although built of steel, it was not properly designed to resist earthquakes. As another example, a brand new high school in Helena, Montana, only one month old, collapsed in the earthquake of 1935. It was a partially steel reinforced building but again, not designed to resist earthquakes. Otherwise, it might be standing today. There are many aspects of good design, but insofar as earthquake resistance is concerned, one fact is of prime importance. The various components of any building must be tied together in such a way as to provide structural continuity. Structural continuity would be entirely lacking, for instance, in a platform resting on four uprights, but not fastened to them. Such a structure might support a sizable load, 
but only so long as the force of the load continued to be vertical. If the structure were subjected to a horizontal force, inasmuch as its parts are not tied together, it would simply topple. Suppose, however, that platform and uprights are fastened together and partially braced. Now the structure offers some resistance to horizontal movement, but not enough resistance to withstand twisting or torsion, so that again, the structure will fail. It is only when all members are properly tied together on all sides that the structure achieves true continuity and the strength to resist movement from any and all directions. Perhaps a more homely illustration is the simple cardboard carton. With its lid open, the carton offers little resistance to outside pressures. But if the lid is closed and securely fastened, the carton has strength to resist forces from any direction. The lid forms what is known in structural design as a diaphragm, which when properly tied in, gives strength to the whole. In much the same way, a building derives strength from its floors and roof, for these are the diaphragms of the building. But as in the case of the cardboard carton, these diaphragms must be tied in properly in order to provide a maximum of structural continuity. Here again is one of the advantages of steel, for in addition to its strength and ductility, steel is workable. It can be fashioned and fitted in countless ways, which not only facilitate construction, but make it possible to achieve complete structural continuity. Much of this is done before the steel even reaches the construction site at the fabricating works where steel is fabricated into convenient units. Units which, because they're properly engineered, will give a building the strength it needs to resist the forces of earthquake. to such modern techniques, intricate assemblies of every size and description can be fabricated and transported to the construction site, where erection time is saved because of the work already done at the shop. Base plates are fastened to their anchor bolts. Columns and girders are fitted into place. And as the building grows, each member is tied into other members, so that finally all units are integrated into one endless continuity. It is from this continuity and from the strength of its steel that the building derives the ability to resist even the shock of earthquake. And it is fortunate indeed that the strength, toughness, and ductility of steel can be given to many materials which otherwise might be weak or brittle. Concrete is only one example. With steel reinforcement, the beauty and utility of brick can be used in new and safer ways. 
glass becomes stronger and safer. Plaster acquires form and durability. And masonry is given a dimension of strength and continuity which the material alone cannot provide. With the aid of steel nails, clips, and bolts, wooden structures acquire the same essential continuity. Even buildings with many openings and large areas of glass can withstand shock if they're properly designed and constructed. For each material has its purpose. And for all building materials, there is one common denominator, steel. Nor have we seen the limits of what we can do. Public-spirited men everywhere are working constantly to advance our knowledge of earthquakes, of earthquake-resistant design and construction. Geologists, scientists, structural engineers, research engineers, architects, earthquake men, and building men. The knowledge they contribute is vital to our welfare, but that knowledge alone is not enough. It must be followed by public understanding and public action. So it is that public officials all over the country are re-examining their building codes and causing codes to be revised. Codes which will protect the people of their communities, not only against fire, flood, and storm, but against the unpredictable threat of earthquake. Through sensible compliance with these codes, many communities have caused schools and other buildings to be abandoned solely because of unsafe design or construction. Many communities, realizing the danger in overhanging parapets and other gingerbread construction, have enacted legislation requiring them to be remedied or removed, and with good wisdom. For even if the building stands, its unsupported parapets and ornamentation are more than likely to be shaken down when the earthquake strikes. And beware to those below. In the city of Los Angeles, the building code requires that some types of parapets be removed and replaced with steel reinforced bond beams, which, when tied into the main structure, reduce hazards and often give additional strength to the building. Removal is not always required, however, for with certain types of parapets, it is possible to tie them into the structure with steel bracing, thus reducing the accident hazard. So we know what we must do. We must make our homes and our buildings safe. We must build them soundly to give them lasting strength. And those entrusted with public responsibility must see that proper codes are not only enacted, but also enforced. For while we cannot yet predict when or where the next earthquake will strike, we know that with wisdom, foresight, and continuing research, we can arm ourselves against it. We can use our weapon, steel. And when we use it wisely, even the earthquake will lose its terror. Our people will be safe and secure. <laughs>